What is up YouTubers and YouTubettes? So, today I'm going to take apart this little flat screen TV and this will work on all LCD um, flat screens it, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure about plasmas or not but I, I think even plasmas will work for this. But anyways, so I'm going to take it all apart and I'm going to get the screen itself out and try not to get Try not to damage the screen when you get it out because it has some valuable parts in it that I will show you. Alright, so I got it broke down to this part now. And a lot of them, when you get to right here, right here will have a warning that says um, do not touch or whatever. That doesn't really matter because we're going to be taking the, the whole, this part apart still. And so... There's these three screws here, and this is where most of your gold will be too on on these monitors. Go go left hand, <laughs> and I am so right handed. And so, you want to get these off. And look, there's a, there's where a lot of the gold is right there on that strip. Not so much on this side, on this one. Come off. Um, so then you have these little connectors right here. These don't hardly ever have anything on them. I mean, on this one there's two, four, six of them. And then you can see by the fact that it has these two things, these are its lights plug plugins. And so once I get it opened up a little more, I'll come right back. Alright, so I got the most outer shell off. And now this will come up, which this is the part we want, so be careful with that. And then also you want the other parts that are in here too. Um Alright, so this one has a light, a fluorescent light tube that's in here and in here, which those have mercury in them, so you don't want to break those. And you don't need to keep that either, so throw that aside. So then, what we get out of here is we get a nice thick piece of plexiglass, so that's about a quarter inch or five sixteenths thick. And then we also get a Fresnel lens out of here. And so now it's not like a projector lens that will project it all, all the light to a single focus. What this will do is it will catch light and focus it everywhere behind it. And so these are great if you have solar panels. You can put this on your solar panel and it will enhance how well it works by a decent amount actually. It, it is very worth it to get a bunch of these and put them on your solar panels if you have solar panels. And then of course, like the plexiglass, that's good for just making anything you would use plexiglass for. And so now, the uh, key of this project here is this guy, the, the lens. Now, what you're going to need is a nice sharp razor blade, because we're going to separate these uh, lenses here. And so you'll go in just like this right here in the corner and they'll separate. Alright, I got my blade in and I just barely chipped the corner away. But you can see like on one at the edge that has these tabs, the two lenses don't match up 100%. The one sticks down farther than the other. And so that's where I picked to separate. And so then you're just going to run your knife around it and here listen. You can hear it separating. And um, I'm going to put this down to go another direction. Now I've gone three of the four ways around it and see if, I can, if it'll separate. And there it goes. So now we have two sides, right? We have 
this side and the dark side. And the dark side is the side we want to start with because it will have most of our indium and tin in it. And now, um, so I'm going to take my razor knife out of that and put this on a f perfectly flat, smooth surface and start um, scraping it away. And so now, if you notice, I got this piece still whole. And now this is optic glass. And so when I scrape this off, it the underneath of this will be able to, you could take um an electrical tester and ohm across it and it has millions of little transistors in it and so like it was actually a good market for optic glass online and so you can actually sell this for pretty pennies so it's definitely worth holding on to and not breaking if you can at all so this is what you do is you, it takes a decent amount of pressure but you take your razor knife and you scrape it down until you get it nice and clean and then what's here on my razor blade that is the indium and tin oxides mixed and so you want to go around this and scrape it all up nice and clean and collect all that and then um, once it's collect once we get done collecting this and I've got a couple other ones I'm gonna do to get some more um, then I'll s we'll start doing the process of separating the indium and the tin I did two screens, and this one I cracked. You can see it cracked it. Um, and so, what I say to that is, this one here, you can see there's the edge of where the color changes. So just stay off of that edge as best as possible, because that's how I broke, how I cracked it, was by trying to get that as best as I could. But I got the other one just fine. Um, and so now I'm going to weigh these two piles and see what they weigh. So this one weighed 0.3, this one weighed 0.5. So I got 0.8 grams total. So not a whole lot. <laughs> Real fast, I wanted to give credit to Robert Murray Smith. A lot of the information I got um, from him to make this video. And so, just giving credit where it's due. Alright, I'm going to wrap up this last big one here. This one's off like a um, 40 or a 42 inch TV. But I'll wrap this one up and then uh, weigh how much this stuff weighs. And then um, we'll start separating the indium and the tin. And I got it done. All right, so that weighs 18.3, like this, with what I have in it already. And so now I'm going to scoop all that in there, and we'll weigh it again. And the results are 27.6. So 9.3 grams off this whole thing. Tiny amounts, tiny amounts. But almost up to an ounce and so I'm happy about that alright lucky me I found one more not a giant one but I, I don't know maybe five more grams to the mix and so after I do this one <laughs> we'll start the next reaction Alright, so in here I've got a half mole solution of water and oxalic acid and now I'm going to put my uh, indium tin oxide in there. And um, it's going to stir all up real good and then I'm going to heat it to 70 degrees Celsius for about an hour, 45 minutes. And then I'm going to take that and filter it off. And so once we get to that area, I'll be back. I just wanted to say uh, a mole of oxalic acid is 90 grams of oxalic acid crystals to one liter of water. And so we're doing half, which would be 45 grams to a thousand milliliters of water. 
So here's what I filtered out on the first filter, and it weighed about um, 14 grams when it was a little wet. It's dry now, so it's probably, I don't know, maybe 12 grams. And it's been a few days. <clears throat> and so you can see there's just a barely any solution in here. I also, um, I tried running it again just to make sure that I would got all the metals and I certainly did and so now um, I'm gonna filter this off again and then I'm going to add um, another half of a mole of oxalic acid to this and that should make um, one of the metals precipitate out all right here I've got um, 45 grams of oxalic acid and I'm gonna dump it in there and um, then I'm going to stir it, and we're going to wait another day or two. All right, it's in there. Give it a good stir. And I'll be back in a day or so. And I am fucking amazing. Fuck. Good night, I love you all. Fuck.